A game object is exactly what it sounds like, an object in the game. A game object can be a character, a weapon, an item, an effect, an invisible object that just runs code or plays sound, etc. Game objects also have a hierarchical relationship, which means some game objects are children of other game objects. The children inherit the transform properties of their parents, like position, rotation, etc. Rotate the parent object around, and the child object will rotate around with it. Game objects have components which define their behavior or their properties. Every game object comes with a transform as a default component. The transform component places the game object in the scene by defining the position in meters, the rotation in degrees, and the scale, which is dimensionless. All of these are in the x, y, and z directions. Rotations actually require four dimensions, so this presents a small issue, but I'll get to that when I talk about quaternions. Components can be added to game objects. If the object is supposed to be visible, it will need a renderer component that controls how to turn the object into an image on the screen. Most of this is built in, and you won't have to worry about it unless you want to get fancy and change something, which we can do later. The renderer will also need a material, which is the color, texture, etc. that you want the object to be made out of. Other components have a lot of details and might warrant their own videos. Here are some of the common ones that you'll see and use. Rigid body component will give the object physical properties like mass and drag. An audio source component will give the object the ability to emit sound. A collider will give the object a physical form by defining a specific shape, meaning that it will interact or collide with other physical objects. Generally, you want this shape to be the same as the shape that the renderer uses to render the object, but they don't have to match. Colliders can also be used as a trigger, meaning that they can trigger code events, like if a player enters a certain area or touches some invisible space. You can also create custom components called scripts. A script is not actually a script in the coding sense. It's a class, which is a custom object, but it behaves like a script as far as the game goes. Scripts use a specific class called MonoBehavior, which is a built-in C-sharp class in Unity made specifically for scripting game objects. I'll spend a lot of time going into the details of how scripts and MonoBehaviors work, but basically you can assign properties like numbers, words, true or false, other game objects, or other scripts to the script and use them however you need to. You can create custom methods or actions that these scripts can perform, as well as events that tie these methods together and allow scripts to communicate with each other at runtime. Scripts can even change the game itself, like adding or deleting game objects, changing the background, slowing or stopping time, or pretty much anything else you can imagine. I'll have an entire series on scripts.